Hey everyone, we are live. Thank you for being here. This is Real Fester and Friends with Chris Holloway. We'll be right back. <laughs> And thank you for being here on Professor and Friends. I have with me one of my best friends in the whole world, especially those that live in Missouri, Chris Holloway. Chris, thanks for being on here with us. Yeah, thanks for having me on, buddy. It's good to see you again. I love the uh, the intro video. Yeah, man, I, I work pretty hard on that every week, trying to get everybody in there. And I love trying to make a fool of people, but a lot of times they do the good job of that themselves. So, uh, well, I was wondering maybe we could find some less goofy looking pictures of me to put. In somewhere. <laughs> I don't think there are any, I tried to I find know. some, I couldn't find I it. Not. <laughs> I love oh. that one on you of you on the, I don't even know how to pronounce it on Aaron's Ubco, UBK, the Ubco. The Ubco. Yeah. Cause I, that was such a great time at the rendezvous. And I mean, we would just look, and we would say, where's Chris at? And you'd be riding around on that motorcycle. You'd be riding everywhere on that thing. That was fun. It was uh, it was a great way to get from campsite to campsite. So I, around dinner time, I could hit all the best uh, all the best meals. <laughs> yeah, that was that was definitely true. Well, I want to remind everybody we are live on Facebook. If you go to the More Expo uh, Facebook page or the Overland Philosopher pa Facebook page. We can take your comments, your questions, and there may be quite a few questions that you want to post tonight. Um, maybe some unanswered. Maybe uh, maybe there's some mm -hmm. secrets out there that we might not be able to reveal. There may be some world premieres tonight. We don't know, but um, we don't know what's coming and what Chris wants to reveal. There's a side of him that's always a little bit secretive. So we, we got to have something up our sleeve. Yeah. Always got to have something. Always got to have something. Well, I, I appreciate you being here. And um, I just uh, I was I was really excited when you said, hey, man, we need to get on the show and get people thinking about more expo. It's it's still quite a ways away. But, um, you know, a lot of people have to plan ahead uh, to do this, especially since the dates have changed. So tell us it about takes, that. It takes a lot of planning to. Uh, <clears throat> to get everything in place and we're we're always trying to figure out you know for the attendee how do we make it more exciting and how do we add fun activations and think outside the box you know really you could plan the expo and just pack a bunch of vendors in and and have that be it and it'd be a pretty fun show but if if we don't constantly keep changing things then then we'll we'll just kind of lose the the shimmer so the whole idea is to to grow and make it as large as possible so actually what we've done <clears throat> this year since we changed the dates out of february the frozen tundra we were able to <laughs> open an outside vendor area that's the size of the uh east hall or either one of the two wings okay but it's it adds an extra forty thousand square feet of vendor space so um that opens us up for an outdoor uh entertainment and hospitality area where we'll be you know kind of bringing some of the big iron love into this event and rocking out with some live music and and having a blast um it's also going to open a big big area where we're going to bring <clears throat> a lot of the youtubers and instagrammers and you know friends and people that have been doing this forever uh will mm. bring them in with an opportunity to display their their rigs and and sell their gear or anything like that because you know 
we got to support those guys. They're the ones that are helping the industry grow. So that's right. Yep. We'll invite all them in. Um, we've got, uh, we've got some really cool things going on. Um, we're going to do, uh, e-bike demo track, which is going to go completely around the perimeter of the outside vendor area. So everything will be, you know, squared off, but then we'll have a 10 foot track that goes all the way around. It'll be about 1500 feet long. Oh, and cool. And how are you going to build that? Uh, well, it's already built. It's the parking lot. Oh, so, <laughs> now <laughs> we're just, what we're going to do is we'll have, we'll have chain link fence all the way around the outdoor vendor. Okay. Area. Um, and then all of the vendors are going to be in. So we'll have essentially a 10 foot aisle all the way around the outside of it. Um, quiet cat e-bikes is going to have a booth mm. right there by the entrance to the outdoor vendor area. So when you walk in, you can hang a left and, and chat with those guys and pick any of the lines of, of e-bikes that they're bringing. Uh, they've got the Jeep e-bike. If you, if you've probably seen those, mm -hmm. uh, the Ridge runner, um, just, they've got the apex and these e-bikes are super cool. So they're, they're built to be able to take hunting and pull deer out of the woods with, uh, oh, awesome. they're yeah. super powerful. So, uh, they've got, they've got a lot of skin in this game. So what we're going to do is we're going to, um, we're going to set them up and then you'll be able to hop on a bike and ride it around the perimeter, which would be kind of cool. You know, you can wave your buddies or whatever yeah. while you're riding the bike around. <laughs> uh, so that'll be a good time. And then, um, yeah, we're we're opening live music out there. Uh, we've got. Uh, if you want me to release something that's never been mentioned before, this is going to be fun. We're we're doing a full on lounge, um, with, you know, theme cocktails in a map reading room, um, lounge seating. We'll have big screen TVs rolling, playing some cool stuff, but. That's always been kind of something that we haven't had at the expo is a place to go sit, relax, have a cocktail, you know, not be sitting at the concession stands or something like that, uh, like a real place to sit. So I um, I got a phone call from Chad at Overland Addict and he's like, it was his idea. He's like, I want to I want to help do this. So uh, between Overland Addict and, and more expo, we're going to we're going to build what we're calling the recovery room, but it's going to be a, an awesome place just to kind of go hang unwind yeah. for anybody. That's not from the area. We'll have somebody that's local that knows the area maps on the tables so he can walk around. He or she can walk around and um, point at point at cool campsites or, you know, tell you some trails to jump on or anything like that. So that will be a lot of fun too. And man, there's just so much stuff. I, I'm having a hard time thinking That's of it cool. all. That's cool. Stuck behind a computer for the past three months or ever since Big Iron, I guess. And yeah, you know, we're just grinding it out. But we've got a lot of love from awesome. bigger, bigger name companies that are wanting to come in and help us promote some really cool stuff. So that's awesome. It's definitely well, I like. Be I love the idea about the recovery room. I know we had talked several times about how you wanted to make it more interactive and uh, make it where people just want to hang out and, and do things like that. So that, that'll be really cool. And Ryan comments. So basically what I'm hearing is I definitely have to make plans to be there. And that is true. You definitely yep. need to make plans to be there. Um, call April the 8th through the 10th. Call, call the wife, whatever it needs to be. Yeah. Just, whatever you need to do. You don't have to worry about to weasel your way out of Valentine's day. Don't anymore. have to worry about <laughs> Valentine's day. So it's, it's one of those things where you don't have really any excuse for not coming. Uh, yeah. So it'll be, it'll definitely be a good time. Lester wants to know if there'll be on site or close by camping. Yeah. There's on site camping, Lester. Um, it's limited. We'll only have about 100 spaces. So um, just keep an eye on the, the Facebook page. You'll, you'll see it when we announce it and it'll likely go pretty quick. But Mm -hmm. They'll have RV hookups, you know, electric power, any of that stuff. And then also some primitive sites to camp in. There's also a, um, a KOA campground that's just within a couple miles. That's fantastic. Um, they've been great working with us the past two years in February. 
uh, letting people camp there and, and everybody's loved it. And there's, there's also dispersed camping within, mm -hmm. I'd say an hour of yeah. the expo. Um, you can hit Glade top trail, you can hit Chadwick, mm -hmm. you can hit Garrison, Swan Creek, any of those areas mm -hmm. and hop on a gravel road and, and not drive very far and find a, a campsite that somebody's already established a fire ring in and sitting next to a beautiful creek or anything like that yeah. so awesome yeah, there's awesome plenty of camping there and wow lady on toyona said we're coming from washington that is a are. pretty good haul that's awesome uh, they've got a booth yeah so yeah i yeah. saw that they were having a booth yeah. they, uh, there's quite a few uh, <clears throat> uh lady owned toyotas out there now it's pretty cool to see them they've contacted my wife and and uh, it's really neat that they've actually got something going uh, I like it when the females get stuff going. That that makes it easier easier on us guys when when they want to tag along. That's for sure. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> Nathan's on Good here. Job. Nathan, looking forward to more. Uh, Nathan's out there, yeah. always out there with his camera taking pictures. Uh, You'll see always. him. At, I'll tell you what, man. He has already established himself as a fantastic photographer. And right now, I can tell you, you will see him at every single event that we do. That's as awesome. As long as he can make it, and as long as he'll be there, he's part of the team on that. Yeah, so he's definitely. Check out Nathan on uh, Instagram, Nathan Anderson Photography. And uh, uh, he has definitely got some photos out there that are well worth mentioning. Uh, the photos that he took at Big Iron were just breathtaking. I mean, there was yeah. not a bad one in the group. Um, there were 1,500 of them. <laughs> 1,500 pictures. And we were, it was not that big of an area. I mean, you're not talking about, you know, 60 square miles. It was, uh, it was a campground and he took pictures, uh, from every angle that, uh, some, I never even knew were there. Uh, so it's, it was very cool. Yeah. Frankie's on here, Frankie, uh, Frankie will have a booth there. Overland rentals. Yeah. yeah. Uh, pretty cool. One of the guys. vendors. Yeah. 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 That, great company, that's awesome. great business plan and great people. So excited to see them there. And his wife sure. was the teacher of the year, so congrats to her. So I want to want to throw that out there. She she did a great Hi. job in uh, traveling around and and uh, teacher of the year in Arkansas. That's pretty awesome. Could tell her congrats from us, Frankie. Now I want to uh, I want to get into a little more of the details <laughs> of more expo um, here as we're talking about this, but let's pause for station identification. Hey guys, it's Chris from More Expo. Mary with Switchback Outdoor Safe. I know from Rhino Belt Rod and Custom. Hey, Jeff with Bad Acid Adventure Co. Where am I from Overland Pioneer? I'm Chef West. Uh, yeah, we can yeah. do that. Hey, it's Adam at Step 22 Gear. Jordan from Andy Sam Overland. Walker from Autotronics in West Virginia. Hey, this is Aaron from Artemis. Hey, I'm Tyler with Yoda Adventure. And you're watching, and you're listening and watching. You're listening to, you're watching the Bro Fester, Bro Fester. Professor. professor and friends. Professor and friends. And I want to thank everybody who jumped on there and uh, did that, Chris. Uh, most, mo almost every one of those were at Big Iron. If you, if yeah, you a bunch noticed, of them, I noticed that. Yeah, yeah. I, watched, and, I walked around. It was so hard to get people to do that because we were right by the music. Well, since it got moved up to the pavilion, but but we made it work, and and yeah. it was real fun. It was real I, fun. I think I just found where you got that last goofy picture of me. <laughs> <laughs> Would you screenshot that out of a video? <laughs> uh, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah I did. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Well, Michael, you're going to have to wait on the big iron dates. We're going to get to that here in just a minute. So you just stick around. Yeah. Uh, Nathan says, thanks for the kind words. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, you you earned those. And uh, Frankie says he'll pass that along to his wife. Now, uh, starting out more, um, we had talked about um, – before you were going to extend the dates and have a few more things during the week before more actually started. Is that going to be a possibility? That's still happening. Um, so we've extended. Now we're a three-day show. We had 
so many people that showed up and got their hotel rooms Thursday night, like I would have done if I was going to the area. Um, and Friday during setup day, the we, I had to put somebody at the front, excuse me, at the front door um, because we just had so many attendees that were coming in to, to check out and see how setup was going, mm. which is cool. I, I love it. And I love the enthusiasm, but we, you know, we're, we're pretty operational at that point. We've yeah. got to make everything happen. So um, <clears throat> I had to set somebody at the front door, but I was thinking about it. It's like, if all these people want to come on Friday, well, why don't we just open the show on Friday? Why not? <laughs> so, uh, so really, you know, I think, the show's grown to be large enough. It deserves to have three days and, and our attendees deserve to not be rushed when they're walking through. Yeah. Um, you know, it's awesome too. We're, we've grown in three days. We have extra time for people to come in. And now the fact that we've, we've changed it to an April date means people can come up and camp and relax and, and see a lot of the other area too. You know, Springfield's mm -hmm. got a ton to offer with the Bass Pro Shop and Top of the Rock and, you know, go catch a show in Branson or something like that or, you know, whatever it may be. Yeah. So, and the best aquarium in the world. So, if you've never been there, you need to go there. It is. I remember when the Boston Aquarium used to be number one. Yeah. And I was just in Boston a couple of weeks ago with my daughter and it's, it's not even worth going anymore. At once yeah. you've been to the aquarium <laughs> in Springfield. And if yeah. you're over 60, it's mandatory <clears throat> that you visit Branson at least twice in your life. It's kind of like the Mecca uh, for the Muslims. You you have to go there. Otherwise, it's not going to end well for you. So if you're over 60, you have to go to Branson at least twice in your life. It's Las otherwise, Vegas for you may not get into heaven. I mean, that's just the way it works. You can go now, see the Jesus uh, show. <laughs> yeah, and the Jesus shows there. Yeah, Jesus live. Um, yeah. Now, what about? Uh, are you going to do a a route to more like you've done the s'more to more route in the past? The s'more to more route has been a huge success. People love it. Um, unfortunately, I'm doing away with it. Okay, we're change. No, we're changing it. Uh, we're not doing away with it. We're making it way more awesome and way more fun okay so um <clears throat> right now we're we're still in a little bit of the planning stages but the s'more to more route has now become the s2m overland rally the s'more to more overland rally and it's a gta style rally and you will get a uh you'll get an opportunity to register and um You'll get a <clears throat> an information packet, and the information packet will have. Um, let's see, I think I might have one here. It'll have routes, and yep, I do. You'll have different routes and turn by turn directions and clues and uh, challenges along the way, and it's still a about a 110 mile, about a four hour route through the Ozark, uh, well, through the Mark Twain National Forest and, and top of the Ozark Mountains. But you'll be able to um, run it solo and you won't be stuck in a huge convoy. Yeah. For the, the 2021 rally or uh, route, we had um, 60, at least 60 rigs yeah. in each of the routes. And had we not canceled it, that would have been uh, quite busy. Yeah. So um, now you don't have to worry about being stuck in a convoy of 60 people. You'll be able to run the route on your own. We'll give you a book at either at S'more or at More. We'll hand you a book if you've registered. Um, there's also going to be some swag involved and stuff like that. So people will be able to uh, really enjoy it and kind of make fun out of it too. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you'll be able to grab your buddy or two, those you that you trust to go with and uh, you know, have fun on it with some of your, some of your friends or make some new ones. Who knows? Uh, but that's cool. We'll have amazing prizes. So every, every sheet or booklet that we give out 
<clears throat> will get turned in at the end. And, you know, I'll, you know me, I'll be up till seven in the morning every day working on it and, mm-hmm. uh, and grading them. But once we find winners and whoever's the closest without going over or under on mileage and whoever answers all the trivia questions the best will win some really amazing prizes. So I'm excited to to give away some stuff now and, and make this more of a interactive event. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Yep. Um, for the, for the outdoor, uh, part that you're doing out outdoors, uh, do you have a list of bands that's going to be playing? I know a lot of people were loving the bands that you had come to big iron. Are we going to see any of those same bands or are we going to see some different entertainment? To be determined, we're still working on that. But yeah, we're yeah. we're talking to several of the ones that were there um, at Big Iron now. Like I mentioned earlier, we we always have to change things up and make mm-hmm. it a little bit different, and things have to be exciting. So um, we'll we'll likely have all that figured out first part of the year. Um, okay, and then all and that then, will be announced on social media when you. Uh... When you when you get yeah I'm sure yep everything gets announced on social media like crazy as as oh, soon yeah. as something cool happens you know I'm picking up the the phone or jumping on my laptop and yep. and getting on there um but you'll see you'll see a lineup and then the schedule will come out in more momentum magazine so whenever whenever that magazine comes out you'll be able to jump in you'll see rally times you'll see vendor booth space you'll see um you'll see music lineup, you'll see class schedules, all of that. Okay. So you're, you're, um, this will be the second year that you will have done the more momentum magazine. Uh, you'll have, uh, a lot of the vendors in there, a list of times and events, pretty much it's, a uh, um, everything you need to know about more wrapped up in one little package. So that, that's cool that that's coming out. The, the magazine was yep. top quality last year. Uh, great job. Uh, who put Cindy that on Pope for you? Knocked it, Cindy Pope knocked it out of the park. Uh, Cindy's on guys, here. Yeah. There's, Cindy's she's, listening. She does, uh, she does her own, which is fantastic as well. The Northology, mm-hmm. uh, magazine. If you guys aren't, aren't subscribing to that, it's free. Just jump in and you'll get the email, uh, monthly whenever they come out, but it's cool. It, it her magazine does a great job of, featuring, you know, local travelers or even, you know, worldly travelers. <clears throat> and, you know, it, it's more cutting edge because they're, they're more, <laughs> my ears are ringing, yeah. <laughs> more adventurous stuff, which I like too. So we, we took some cues from, from the Northology gang and we had articles in there. Joey, you wrote an article for the magazine. Mm-hmm. Um, that was great. We'll, will likely ask you to do another one, but it it's fun. Cause this is our magazine, you know, it, it's a, yeah. a place for us, this local community to be able to, to read what our buddies are doing and, and what people are up to. It's nice that we have all these different, different contributors to the, the community. Yeah. It's amazing. So that's true. Yeah. And stay tuned for more momentum. That'll actually release. Um, <clears throat> it should release digitally uh in january which will be january through probably uh february or march it'll be a little bit of a changing magazine online Mm -hmm. but you can always jump in get new updates anything like that and then we'll go to print you know we'll we'll print ten thousand copies and distribute them everywhere like we did last time and yeah they're they're kind of a fun keepsake and collector's item that you can take away for free from the expo because yeah you know I not much so. of that stuff's free <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's uh it's it's so cool I, and I, I think uh the same thing when i when i grabbed mine um i, I was like you know in 10 years from now i want to look back in this and and remember what we were doing and and the people that were there because that is that is uh something that that brings up the good memories um uh, it was it was amazing to me in February of this year when you mm-hmm. opened the doors for vendors to come in and and I thought man I wonder if anybody's going to show up 
I wonder if anybody's going to show up. I mean, there was ice storms and snowstorms and just people were coming from everywhere. And you open those doors and people just rolled in and, and everybody had the same attitude. You know, we were made for this. This is, this is what we yeah. do. And everybody showed up. And then the next day when the doors opened for people to be there, people just rolled in by the droves uh, probably because they'd been locked up for a year, but um, you know, <laughs> they were looking for a place to go. And I was just, I was impressed with everybody who was there from vendors to attendees. They just showed up and showed out and it was, it was heartwarming for me. Uh, and, you know, and it just, it, it gave me, it gave me chills because People, people, you know, it's one big gigantic family and everybody showed up and had a great time. And there was not anybody who showed up that was disappointed. There was not single one single negative word that I heard came out of 2021. And for 2022 to be so much bigger and better, uh, I can't wait, especially getting away from the bad weather. Uh, I think it's I think it's going to be huge, and you shouldn't even have to ask if you're going to put this on your calendar. This is something you don't want to miss. Yeah, it's <clears throat> and and plan to spend some time. You asked me earlier, you know, are we extending the show? Yes, but are we going to have stuff going on throughout the week before? Absolutely. Um, mm. Even if it's non more expo sanctioned uh, things that are happening, I know that. Artemis is going to have a pre-party at mm -hmm. his shop, and I'm sure Chef Wes is throwing it down. Yeah. Um, I know that Overland Addict is going to have a pre-party at his shop. He mentioned he was going to have some live music going on, stuff like that. I, either one of these are a an hour trip in from your base camp, mm -hmm. in, uh, the Mark Twain. So, you know, you can go set up camp and then come in, check this stuff out, and then go back and and camp some more, or, you know, whatever you want to do. Um, we'll also have some stuff going on probably at some local breweries. Um, we'll have uh, we'll have a, a party going on for uh, storytellers. We're calling this one the, the spotlight on the storytellers, which I believe is mm -hmm. going to be Wednesday before the show. And it's going to be... Uh, a place for all of the storytellers, the YouTubers, the social media, uh, you know, influencers, anything like that to, to come in and display their work, their photography, their videography, their artwork. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of people that, you know, travel and they, they sell handmade items and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And that honestly you know, pays for a lot of what they're doing. And right. uh, so we're very selectively looking out and grabbing, um, grabbing influencers that we want to bring in and we'll have all their work on display. So that, that'll likely be uh, Wednesday before more expo. So yeah, we're going to, we're going to fill up the whole entire week. Yeah. And is that going to be on site? That'll be off site at okay. a, uh, it's a, a beautiful little, uh, it's actually a wedding venue um, or wedding reception venue in downtown Springfield. But wow. that'll be something that people can come in during the day, check out, you know, in and out, kind of like an art gallery, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, if anybody a has a wild idea that you want to get married at Moore Expo, just come see me. Um, I'll have my credentials. I can, I can do a little ceremony and, and sign your thing there. And it won't be any big deal and you'll remember it for the rest of your life. And it will be, be the cool. very first one, the very first wedding ever at more. <laughs> so if anybody wants to do that, come on, come see me. Oh look me man. Up. <laughs> I want to see it. I love it. Yeah. It, if you get married at more expo, you get free more expo tickets for life. Hey, Hey, we got a picture there it is. Too. World premiere yeah. right there. If you get married <laughs> at More Expo, you heard it here, folks. Free More Expo tickets for life. How cool would that be? How cool would that be? <laughs> and oh, my be. gosh. That is awesome. <laughs> now, I want to I want to encourage everybody to go to the More Expo website. It's www.moreexpo.com. Check out the vendors page. Um, the vendors are the highlight of this show. Uh, they're the bread and butter of of why a lot of people come. You get to see all the new gear, the new gadgets, 
all the builds, uh, the different things that people are coming up with um, that they've that, that they're wanting to show off. And so, uh, give us a little rundown on the vendors. Do you have any this year that that were maybe not there last year? Um. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. You'll see Long Range America there. Um, if anybody knows them, they make the auxiliary fuel tanks. Fuel tanks, for, yeah. For your vehicles, uh, most any vehicle that we're taking off-roading, too. Uh, you'll see uh, Crossbreed Holsters is there. They were there the first year. They couldn't make it uh, the second year, but they'll have a, a good display. So if anybody's got a, a need for a, a holster or anything like that, um, a brand new exhibitor at the Moore Expo is uh, this new event that we're promoting hard, the Big Iron Overland Rally. They'll mm -hmm. have a booth there. <laughs> oh, well, isn't that something? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know what we've got? Let's see. I'm looking at the list right now. Um, you know, Lady Owned Toyota's Bead Lockers is new. Um, they're an outfitter from up north. Uh, Cali Raised LED is going to be in. Mm-hmm. So it'd be awesome having those guys and they've got a big spot and they're bringing a ton of product. So Good. Uh, one nice thing about Cali raised LED is uh, you can usually get what you need from them. They're not subject to these crazy back orders. They're staying on top of it. So they're going to, they're going to come in with a semi full of stuff. Um, Rugged bound supply company. Mm -hmm. If you've seen the rooftop tent that I have on the Lexus and the ostrich wing awning, they'll be in and Theo sent me the 3d rendering drawing for his booth. And he's going to, he's going to step the game up. His wow. booth space is amazing looking. Awesome. It's awesome. just beautiful. He's, he's got walls built and, you know, perfect ways to mount awnings so you can see them real good and open them and close them and all that stuff. He'll be over by uh, the seminar room. Mm -hmm. Bad Axe going to be in there. Yeah, Jeff. Uh, Jeff's on here. Hey, Jeff. Yeah. Bad Axe going to be Jeff. there. Oh, there he is right there. <laughs> yeah. Long Creek uh, Apparel's in the house. Yeah. Long Creek's in. You know, you got a uh, Storyteller Overland. Yona is coming in with the diesel Yona's heaters. Coming, yeah. Um, you know, and, and anybody that I don't mention, uh, needs to be seen so yeah do jump on the the exhibitors page on the website it's it's laid out super easy so you can see who's there so we've got all the icons everybody's logo mm -hmm. but when we build the exhibitor page on the website it's like anytime i jump on some other events page i see all these logos and it's like i don't really know what that means like you know i don't know what whatever abc company does just by their logo so we added a, a portion at the bottom of the website it's you know getting to know all the vendors of more expo and as you cruise down every single one of them that's there we've put a an image to try to really show what they do mm -hmm. and then we've put a you know a paragraph or two about their business um, all with clickable links so click those links and you can jump in and and jump over to the website and and check all the the different companies out but man it's cool we got global expedition vehicles is going to be back mm -hmm. with with a new build that they're working on Good. it's funny they're working on it now and it'll probably be ready by it's more expo those things are insane it's insane it's, yeah it's crazy um let's see red arc's back adventure motors and red arc have a huge a huge booth space up in the the center um the center uh hall i guess um they've got a huge island up there and i know that adventure motors is bringing in um a 2022 tundra which i think that they are getting like the first one in the united states well wow. or so i've been told yeah. Um, but that's going to be all tricked out. They've got the uh, Pro Charger uh, Tacoma that they're building for uh, Pro Charger right now to take to SEMA. So that's going to be on display there. Uh, Red Arc's got their new uh, Tacoma that um, 
I think it was Mule Expedition Outfitters. Yeah. Bill, have you seen that thing? Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. It's gorgeous. It's so mind blowing. Yeah. They'll have it there on display, probably making margaritas or something out of it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. I, if anybody just... out there, and let me ask you this, Chris, while we're going down through there, do you have room for more exhibitors? Um, if if there's more out there that people know of. Yeah, I do. I want. I have more room. Uh, we have ten by ten spots, which are you know kind of the shakedown street locations mm -hmm. that you'll see on the the southern wall and then the interior east and west walls. Um, but those are the perfect ten by ten pop ups and. You know, I always like going and walking through those because that's where you get to see all the cool yeah. gadgets and gizmos and all the the fun apparel and stuff like that. Right, and plus, if you have ADD, you see a whole bunch of stuff at once, so you yeah. don't have to look at anything for a long period of time. That's mm -hmm. the perfect spot yeah. for you. That's probably why I like those. <laughs> <ones>. <laughs> uh, so we've got a few of those open left. Um, the inside is, for the most part, booked. Like. Wow. If we weren't adding the outdoor space, uh, you know, and staying in February, I would say we're pretty much booked. So yeah. you can already know that you're going to come in and see as good of a show as you did in 21. Definitely. Now we're working to add stuff. So for outdoor space, we've got um, we've got 30 th or 40,000 square foot that we opened up outside and I'm probably 30 percent filled up on outdoor space so well if so if anybody out listening. there if you have somebody in mind if you go to the website and you get on the vendor page and there's somebody that you know of that's not there that might want to come like i have one that immediately comes to mind that's been a vendor at places that i've been that i would love to see come and show off their stuff is magnuson superchargers i would love for them to come and set up outside because if if i had a dream come true it would be the dream of me putting a supercharger on my FJ and I just want to wake up and it be there. And so they need to come, they need to come and, and make my dreams come true. So I'm just telling them right now. You need it with all that weight you got on that. I need FJ. it. I need it. You I need, need it a lot bad. of things. Regearing is not going to help you much more. Than <laughs> <laughs> hey, I can, the, hey, I can make it up there. I can make it up the hills in Missouri. I, I go slow, but I can make it up there eventually. It's mm, just, I may yeah, have to lock the hubs in on 65 to make it, but I'll make it. Toe strap <laughs> and a truck in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, let me ask you this. Will Will there be another more expo build for 2022? Or are you going to stick with what you've got? Oh, hmm. Man, I don't know. That's so... Come on. It's so off. The, this one got built like... Quick. I had no idea it was happening until 30 <laughs> days before the show. So you never really know. Um, <laughs> I, I'd i love to see another build. I don't know if I'm allowed to, to get any more vehicles. I've got a... Allowed? What do you mean by that? What What is that I've word? Purge one. Well, you know, it, it's... Uh, I got a... I got to toe the line here. <laughs> I've, got, I've got the the Jeep Wrangler and now the the Lexus, uh, but then I've also got a, a couple of hot rods in the garage too that yeah never get to see the light of the day since I've found out how much fun four wheel drive is. But <laughs> yeah, you know, so I, I think the, I think we'll probably get rid of the the Thunderbird. She's probably the first on the chopping block, and then. Mm. Uh, and then if something gets added for another build, uh, it might end up being a, a defender or something cool. Oh, that'd be and cool. That I've would been be around cool. the, the re-rover guys a little bit too often and, and they're really rubbing off on me. I tried it with the discovery. I, I got one, I had it. I just, I couldn't put the time into it. So I had to yeah. let it go. But Well, the discos are like a two year old. You gotta, you gotta coddle them along, you know, and, and, you know, take care of them. They need a lot of attention mm -hmm. uh, and you don't have that time. You've got way too much to do. So you need <laughs> something a little more reliable. So you yeah. went with a Toyota product and I, that's right. I said it. Uh, went it, with a Toyota product. It's and... been reliable. When it's not broke down, <laughs> it runs great. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Well, one uh, one of the things that we have not touched on is 
the um, educational part of more about learning more at more. So tell us uh, about what you've got lined up for that. Education is one of the cornerstones of more expo. You know how important that is. It's hmm. and <clears throat> Aaron at switchback will tell you the same thing. It's, it's so critical to, to, to get people educated for one, it creates confidence. So you go out and, and be confident to go adventure and do, do some things that are maybe a little bit out of your comfort zone. But the main thing is that it keeps it, keeps everybody safe. So, um, we will have, uh, we will have a lot more class time. I think we're going to have about 25 hours total of education time that you can get at more expo. Um, what? And- what you talking about? What you talking about? What you, what you, what you talking about? What? That's a lot. So you'll be able to come in and get 25 hours. <laughs> I had that same just. I know you've been waiting to push that button. Saw <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> your finger. <laughs> I have way better stats than that. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you'll be able to come in, um, and I think we're gonna do the the classes again in the. Uh, I I got to come up with a better name for this building, but the fairgrounds calls it the Beef House. Uh, <laughs> so. Yeah. In the beef house. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe we'll come up with a cool acronym for beef. You know, I don't know, be educated every fern way. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know any words that start with F. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fun time. Yeah. Freaking adventure. So uh, the nice thing about that, that building over there is it's much larger so we can seat about 75 or maybe 85 people in it. Um, hmm. as long as the COVID restrictions aren't insane. Uh, but we were limited when we had our, our classroom inside to 30, uh, before COVID restrictions. And then when COVID restrictions hit, it was limited to like 14, which obviously isn't going to work when we have five to 10,000 people coming through the door right? that all want to attend these. So, the goal is to the goal is to open it up and make seminars and classes available in enough places, whether I've got to use the, the beef house and the seminar room and another room um, and have our educators kind of move back and forth room to room. Um, the goal is to make sure that we get everybody included because that's that's a huge deal. I think that's one of the main main reasons to come to the event yeah, is to come in and attend those seminars. It's, I agree. you know, essentially it's, it's free education that could save your life. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, yeah, we're, that's true. We're speaking of that. saving your life and speak also speaking of switchback outdoor safety, who's going to be a huge integral part of that. And, and in fact, since it's taking place in the beef house, we may name Aaron Brutus beefcakes. Um, to take care of that. But Aaron is one of the sponsors of the show and he always likes to talk about safety. So let's have our safety brief real quick. This is Aaron Paris with Switchback Outdoor Safety, and in this series, we're talking about trauma kits. One item you should have in your trauma kit is an emergency rescue blanket. Although it looks silly, this item can keep you warm and can help avoid shock in any patient that's lost a significant amount of bleeding. So make sure you put one in every kit you put together. Loved it when he did that. That was so funny. He looked like one of the three wise men uh when he did that it was in fact it was hard for him to keep a straight face when he did that but i want to thank him for doing that thank you switch bit out outdoor safety for help keeping us safety minded well that's i think that's going to be awesome all the different uh the the ones that are coming in to talk about uh the all the different things you're going to run the gamut um as far as topics going for for the show and i think people will, from every part of life has uh, we'll be able to get something now. Keith, who's a good friend of mine down in Texas, 
uh, says motorcycle camping has become real popular. Any exhibits for motorcycle camping equipment, small, lightweight, durable gear? Uh, who do we have for motorcycle stuff? Normally, we have uh, Green Chili Adventures in, and um, I we haven't secured a spot with them yet, but they're they'll likely come in. They're they're a great vendor. Um, Skunk Works there in in Springfield is a local business that will will likely see come in but we we don't have much for sure as far as motorcycles go uh we'd love it if if the adv riding community would um you know come together and come join us the the best way to get those guys to come to the expo is to get the adv riders in so uh you know if you guys ride adventure bikes and and want to see that stuff let some of these businesses know, you know, this is a, a growing event and, you know, very professionally ran, I hope anyways. And, uh, yeah. you know, it, it's, it's always a great time for everybody, vendors and attendees. So, um, if you get an opportunity, just, just reach out to some, some companies that, you know, and, and let them know about us. That's the, that's the way that we've grown so fast. So, so easily, you know, in the past two years, and we look to add more motorcycle. Uh, I also want to start adding some more Subaru stuff. Mm. I think I think that's growing. Yeah. Um, and then, honestly, I I see some additions, kind of outside of the the normal train of thought that are going to start coming in. I think uh, this is going to sound crazy, but I think uh, river jet boating is getting huge. Wow. And I think. Um, I think we'll see kind of a cool mix between overlanding adventure off-roading and towing your mini river jet boat to some of these awesome rivers and, mm -hmm. you know, buzzing up the river five, 10 miles and setting up camp and then back to your rig. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, I, I think sailboating is another one that's going to grow. And I think the two, industries kind of kind of merge pretty well you know you get out on the sailboat you're you're using a a solar charger you're running mm -hmm. auxiliary batteries you're you've got the you know the snowmaster fridge out there or whatever fridge it is you're you're getting off the boat and and shooting over to shore and setting up a little fire or anything like that so i think i think as we grow we're going to start seeing a lot of different kind of niche stuff that that fits with us we, we all obviously we all love the the four-wheel drive and getting to remote places but there's so many other ways to get to to remote places that i'll be excited to to kind of start bringing some of those to light too so stay tuned for vendors that are going to be seem a little bit out of place when you walk in but you're gonna be like man you know what that makes a lot of sense yeah and yeah we'll we'll be excited to well you know overlanding is is a is a small word with big ramifications it's it's got a whole lot of different small mm. uh things under the umbrella and you could you can include just about everything possible outdoors uh camping hiking uh uh ad adventure biking uh just bicycling in general um, there's, there's so uh, kayaking, there's so many things that you could throw under that umbrella. So I don't think there would be anything there that would not really fit into the umbrella of, of overlanding. So there, you could go a thousand different directions. It's, it's, uh, and Nathan says paragliding, Woo, man, uh, <laughs> you're not getting me on one of them things that don't have no steering wheel, well, but, uh, now, yeah. especially <laughs> paragliding with a kayak at the same time. I'm, oh yeah. That'd be great. How that would work. Yeah, that would be like <laughs> going up into uh, in, into Canada where they fly people in to go fishing. If you would just have your kayak and you'd be on a paraglider and just sit <laughs> down on the water, it'd be. <laughs> oh, that would be awesome! That would be awesome. I saw I saw the ad acronym uh, for uh, for the beef house. Be educated, early friends. There we go. Yeah, yeah. yeah now we're on well, the right path. Porker's my buddy out in West Virginia. Um, I appreciate oh, you listening, okay. Porker. He is headed to the X Fest this weekend, which is happening. Uh, I think it's in Virginia, putting on put on by Mountain State Overland. 
Uh, that ought to be pretty cool. So uh, right. he's pretty excited to go to his first event. They don't have many events out there. So uh, that's that's pretty cool. Thanks for watching, brother. Now, switching gears a little bit, we're sitting at 48 minutes. So uh, switching gears a little bit, let's talk about Big Iron. Uh, yeah, what do you, what do you have uh, planned for Big Iron coming up? I'm, man, I'm so excited. Big Iron was a hit. That was fun. That, that was, was fun. Damn fun event. Yeah, it was uh, very different than anything I'd ever been to. So, you know, when you ask me what I've got planned for any event, the second year, third year, fifth year, tenth year, it's always going to be, well, it's going to be bigger. It's going to be better. The music's going to be louder. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so, so I'm already kind of working with Adam a little bit and we're, we're kicking around, um, some band ideas, but we've got, we've got some cool ideas and we're already talking to some, some really cool bands. I think we'll be able to get a, a little bit larger name band in, um, now, uh, the bluegrass band that we had, uh, Arkansas, they mm. just won. Um, they won Arkansas Bluegrass Band of the Year. Yeah. So they're bad, and they were a big hit. I mean, everybody yeah. there was there was not a bad person there. Everybody loved every single person that you brought in. So we topping that idea. is going to be a chore. It it's will it's be. definitely going to yeah. be a chore. Yeah. We'll we'll do it. And, uh, and it'll just, we'll continue to set the bar. Um, but that's good because we, we want to, I mean, the whole thing behind it is we want the attendees to have a blast and yeah, by bringing in good music and bringing in amazing vendors and all that stuff, it'll happen. So, um, we could do a little drum roll, please, but let's, let's set the date right here. And this is the first time we've ever publicly set it uh on any kind of social media but mark your calendars don't mess around second week second weekend of june it'll be a friday saturday event again um also you're welcome to hang out sunday but mark your calendars for that second week of june and i don't know the dates off the top of my head is that the 10th uh, that's gonna be uh friday will be the 10th 11th and 12th there we go, there we go. June Friday, 10th, 11th, and 12th. Yep. So um, that should be early enough in June where it's not super hot, but uh, late enough in the spring where we don't get dumped on with a bunch of rain. And now that I've said that, it'll probably pour rain and be murderously hot. Well, you know, uh, the this year there were threats of rain the whole time we were there. I mean mm – -hmm. uh, we were we were looking at and hearing thunder and it was supposed to rain all day saturday and it rained a little bit saturday morning and after that it was perfect and Beautiful. and so uh somebody was living right i don't know i don't know what the deal was but uh somebody was living right and it just turned out to be one of the most beautiful weekends ever and you know kansas is not a place that's on your bucket list to go overlanding uh so when you when you made this event in Kansas. I was like, what in the world? Chris has stayed up too late. I don't know <laughs> what, I don't know what he's been drinking, but it wasn't his normal stuff. And now he's playing this event in Kansas. Come on. But when I got there and saw it with my own eyes and saw the setup and how everybody was camped and, and how it was, it was almost like going to mom's house for Thanksgiving. I mean, everybody yeah. was, was gathered in one spot, like being around the table. Everybody just had a great time. Uh, you gave back uh, to the community. Everybody showed up and showed out and gave back to Big big Brutus. And it just, it was something like I had never experienced before. We, that was the, the best feeling ever was going down there a week later after Big Iron when everybody was still high on it and laughing man they were so so happy when i walked in you know it's funny we could have wrote them a check for 150 dollars and they would have been thrilled i'm yeah. pretty sure um instead we got to write them a check for eight thousand six hundred dollars and that's 
that's all because of our our attendees um mm -hmm. and our vendors i mean it, it's a community thing you know what i loved about it was those guys didn't have to pick up any trash when we left yeah. the place was spotless yeah they didn't they could they they couldn't believe it so um so yeah second weekend of june and you'll also have uh we're gonna do a rally very similar to the the s'more to more overland rally that we're doing this year for more expo okay um so stay tuned for information on that but it'll it'll be a professionally ran um grand touring rally that'll be a lot of fun checkpoints and all that um live music's going to be off the chain we'll increase the amount of um classes that we do mm -hmm. so we'll get more education in on it um we are going to limit the number of of camping spaces and tickets for this event um i love throwing big events and the bigger the party the better usually but this is such a homey event mm. and it it it's it works better when it's not mm -hmm. you know 75,000 people showing up yeah so we're going to cap the tickets at 500 so we're only going to do 500 tickets and then after that um you won't be able to to get in so uh i expect that tickets will likely go on sale uh probably in november so stay tuned for that um also more expo tickets will probably go on sale mid-october i think we'll we'll likely have that announced at rendezvous in the ozarks which you need to come see us there too rendezvous in the ozarks is a killer event and i love those guys we actually uh, jumped in and <coughs> and bought all the firewood so we can give we can give free firewood out at mm. rendezvous just come by the booth it'll be it'll be full of firewood but we wanted to give back to to them because you know they they've been a staple in the community for forever and yep. um and all the attendees are great i always have such a good time when i go down there so i uh, couldn't think of a better way to to sponsor and support that event than buying 2400 pieces of split firewood <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, yeah, that's going to be awesome. In fact, uh, in in a couple weeks, not next week, but the next, I will have all five guys from Natural State Overland on the show, and they will be talking about what they're going to be doing at at the rendezvous this year. Uh, last year was a record number of attendees, uh, just people everywhere, and they they gave away some awesome prizes. It was a great time. The weather was amazing, and uh, you know that for me. Uh, rendezvous is always like a celebration of the end of summer because that's right when it stops being yeah. uh, unreal hot and it's cooled down and it's it's the nights are cool, the days are nice, and it's just one of those times where uh, you just get together with friends and it's like the first thing after a hot summer and it's, it's like a fresh relief. And uh, so I always look forward to going to that. I know they're probably going to break the record again this year with, with mm -hmm. more people being there and with more um, and, and big iron sponsoring the, the wood, everybody don't have to pack in wood, go by the more expo booth and pick up, pick up a, a, a some wood. You don't have to pay $5 for two sticks at a little convenience store down the road. You can come to more expo yep. and they'll just give it to you. <laughs> I'll give it away for free as long as we've got it now. Please don't come fill your pickup truck. But I mean, <laughs> if you need to, if you got a big family, then do it. You know, it, yeah, it's there until it's gone. And you know, maybe we'll decide how much you know how many dump trucks we want to bring in next year of firewood. But um, the it looks like Long Creek says, "Will there be another auction?" Probably. Yeah, he's talking about Big Iron. Mm -hmm. That was a blast. Uh, that was fun. Absolutely. And everything starts at a dollar. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, that was fun. That, that was sick. probably one of the highlights of the weekend was, was that, and that was just a spur of the moment thing. Um, everybody was just totally infatuated with big Brutus uh, that they just wanted to help out and give back. And when you came up with this on the spur of the moment, everybody just showed up and showed out. It was, it was very, very awesome. That was fantastic. And you know, we raised enough money to, to help break them over the, 
the line so they can get it painted. And I think they were supposed to start painting it. Um, I'm looking at the calendar. They were supposed to start painting it next week. I've not heard anything yet, but uh, if they don't do it next week, it'll be at the end of um, at the end of October. When they do start painting, stay tuned on the the Big Iron Facebook page because I'll make an announcement. I'm going down there. I want to see him painting it. So yeah. I'm going to go down there. They said they'd open it up so we can come in and camp. Um, so, again, we'll be able to camp in that field. If we get enough people together, maybe I'll I'll get some guys to come down and play music in the bucket or something like that. But we're going to have a good time. I, I want to go down there and, and see them spraying paint on that thing. So that'll be super Yeah, cool. they'll probably do it uh, in kayaks coming in on paragliders. Uh, hang yeah. gliders. Uh, yeah. I don't know how in the world you you would else you would paint that thing. <laughs> that's, that's the way. I mean, I how in the world do you get up there? Come on. <laughs> uh, yeah. I would not want to be a painter painting that thing. Uh, all kudos go to you if you if you're one of those guys that paint uh, extremely large objects uh, like that. Uh, I couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. They say that the the tree line that would be on the. I think on the north side, the tree line usually, or 20 years ago, whenever they painted it, the whole, all the trees were orange from the, the Oh, overspray. from the overspray? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I bet that's going to be good. Well, I can't <laughs> wait. Uh, mark your calendars now for, uh, let's see, we set it at, uh, we've had so many comments. I got to go back up here. June 10th through the 12th. 2022 yep. big iron overland rally it will be something like you have never been to before and it's going to end up being one of those events where people are going to have to set their clock for eight o'clock on a saturday morning when registration opens up and it sells out in about two minutes that's what it's going to end up being yeah and we'll give everybody ample heads up this go around just so that way it doesn't i, I hate for people to not have a chance and be left out. So we'll, we'll probably start announcing the, the true release date about 30 days ahead of time. And, you know, we'll kind of do a countdown clock on it and then we'll, we'll open the tickets up and they'll be available. And then when that thing fills up, it, it fills up and we're off to the races. So cool. that'd be, yeah, it'd be a blast though. Awesome. We'll definitely want to stay tuned um, to uh, social media on Big Iron. If you if you're not a person that has uh, liked More Expo Facebook page or the Big Iron Overland Rally Facebook page, you definitely need to go like those because that's where all the updates will come, and then you will um, you'll know what's going on and when the tickets go on sale because you don't want to miss out on that. Um, man, awesome, awesome things coming up in the future, bro. That is uh, such something to look forward to um i know april is still a long ways away but it's going to be on it's probably going to come up on you faster than any of us it's going to seem like an eternity and you're going to wake up tomorrow and it's going to be april uh, it, but every year it's like that you know i i think about that a couple times throughout the year it's like pretty soon it's going to be tomorrow <laughs> and, yeah and then on the day that it's tomorrow it's like Oh shit! It's tomorrow, and yeah. then, uh, <laughs> and then, but then when it's over, it's like it's done. Yeah, like I I want to do it again next week. So that's kind of how Big Iron got got going. It was we had so much fun at More Expo. It's like we got to keep the momentum. We got to keep this rolling. What else we got? Yeah, and oh, and you know are. you're you're torturing yourself because you schedule them uh back to back months and so getting everything ready one right after another yeah i know it's got to be hard on you but we appreciate you doing that for the community that's always been something that that you've had uh, a heart to do and and we definitely appreciate that that's I super love cool love the community man this is i wish i'd have been doing this 15 years ago or at least hanging out with all the all these people it's amazing I, i'm loving it it's so cool it, it's not a this isn't a uh, a subculture. It's not a car club. It's you know, it's more than that. So yeah. it's a community. Yeah. So definitely. this has just been the highlight of my life. I love it. Well, well I I know you're gonna be doing it for a long time to come and, and we cannot wait to see 
what you've got in store for us 2022 and beyond. So, uh, Chris, I, I really appreciate you coming on the show. Had a great time. Uh, learned a lot of stuff. Had some world premieres. I mean, this was the show of the year right here. So <laughs> it, it was it was definitely one that you wanted to be on. Make sure that you go to www.moreexpo.com to find out all the latest. Make sure and tune in to uh, the Big Iron Overland Rally Facebook page and the More Expo Facebook page to be up to date with all of the w- other world premieres that will be coming out. And uh, I know that you're going to be wanting to stay in tune for that. So, Chris, thanks for coming. I appreciate you being on here as always. Everybody else, I hope you have a great week. I'm the professor, and these are my friends. Dance, baby, dance, baby. Dance. Thank you for watching. Professor. 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 Professor and friends. Sponsored by.